Imagine a world where we can do computation inside living cells. The problem that we're trying to solve is really trying to have a more sophisticated diagnosis that can happen automatically inside cells. Imagine a biological computer that operates inside a living cell. So for example, it could be used to determine whether a cell is cancerous, and if so, then trigger the death of the cell. So here we're talking about little molecular systems that you can, you know, work that run in a test tube or maybe even in a live cell, so they're really small. The type of work that they're doing is essentially they're trying to sense, analyze and control molecular information. In this project we're trying to use DNA as a programmable material. DNA is highly programmable, just like a computer, and we can program a whole range of complex behaviors using DNA molecules. So we're taking advantage of a phenomenon called DNA strand displacement. So DNA strand displacement is essentially a competitive hybridization reaction. So it's two strands of DNA that come together and as they bind to one another, a third strand that was initially bound is kicked off. One issue with like any biology research or, or biomolecular research is that it's always sort of a, a cycle of, of trial and error. You test it, it doesn't work, so you go back to the drawing board and you do that over and over again. And it's a slow cycle because doing experiments just is hard and it takes a lot of time. We developed a language for programming molecular circuits made of DNA. So the programmer would write down a collection of DNA strands and the software will work out how these DNA strands interact with each other and can be used to predict their behavior over time. And this kind of software could, for example, be used to detect and fix bugs in a molecular circuit design before that circuit is built. For decades, biologists have been using chemical reaction networks as a means of describing the behavior of biological systems. So what our technology enables for the first time is that any system described as a chemical reaction network can now be translated, implemented, in biology at the molecular level. One of the things that we've done recently, which I'm particularly excited about, is uh, that we have created, designed, uh, using our tool, and created experimentally is uh, an implementation of the so-called approximate majority algorithm. At the moment, really, the, uh, the technology is very much in its infancy. It's still very much at the research stage. So most of what we're doing is in, is in the test tube. An enormous goal will be to have what we're able to do in the test tube also working inside cells. That's a hugely uh, uh, enormous challenge. So this could enable a whole range of biotechnology applications. For example, it could allow us to both detect and treat disease to a level of precision that has not been possible so far. It could also allow us to uh, make new compounds far more efficiently. And these compounds could be medicines or biomaterials. And ultimately, it could allow us to make uh, biological computers that operate at the molecular scale. The last technological revolution, the software revolution, was defined by our ability to encode ones and zeros on silicon. But the next revolution won't be about ones and zeros. It will be about our ability to encode A's, G's, C's and T's, the building blocks of DNA. As a scientist who studies biological computation at Microsoft, I work at the intersection of mathematics, computer science, and biology. And everywhere I look, I see cells operating as little computers. For example, consider the immune cells that patrol your body day in, day out. These cells have to solve the problem of fighting disease and infection without fighting against the body itself. And that's an information processing problem. So somehow there must be a program running inside these cells, a program that responds to input signals and cues and shapes what that cell will do, a program of dynamic interactions at a molecular scale. And these programs must operate in a distributed way across your immune system, coordinating and sharing information to protect your body. You could think of this as living software. If we could figure out the biological programs that run inside cells, like those in our immune system, it would transform our ability to understand how and why cells do what they do. 
Because if we truly understood these biological programs, then we could debug them when things go wrong. And that means we could do truly wonderful things. For example, what if we could program ourselves to detect, eradicate, or even prevent disease better than we can now? Or even replace damaged tissue? That would mean living longer, healthier lives. Or what if we could program crops to resist fungal pathogens, or even to bear fruit more often? That would enable us to feed a hungry planet. Or what if we could figure out how to harness quantum effects to capture energy from the sun in truly efficient ways, more efficient than our current solar panels? That would be the ultimate green energy. It's hard not to get excited about potential outcomes like this. And while there are some common misperceptions and genuine ethical concerns about the science here, the reality is this. Programming biology has the potential to transform medicine, agriculture and energy and many other industries on a global scale. Scientists have developed CRISPR technology that allows us to precisely target and edit problem genes. With base editing, we can rewrite DNA strands one base at a time. We can even build functioning synthetic circuits out of DNA. But figuring out how to use these tools is largely driven by trial and error. Developing robust experimental protocols is difficult, and reproducing consistent and scalable results is a huge hurdle.